So here is a circuit that I've built. It's a um, CMOS clock. And as you can see, it's 9.50 at night. Zoom in here on the... Looks like I'm a little slow. <clears throat> and it's based generally off of a circuit that's out of uh, Digital Fundamentals by Thomas L. Floyd. Um, in the book, they, uh, in chapter 8, they have a circuit that's very similar to this. This is the schematic that I ended up designing. And if you uh, look at the one that's in the book, it's very similar to this. The, the way they decode the 6s off of the 10s units. The only thing that I did a little differently was um, I didn't like the sort of funky way that they did the uh, the hours. They kind of treated the hours as two separate things. I decided just to sort of treat it as one thing. So I have one counter. <clears throat> and then because there is, you know, if you have a counter that's counting in binary, there is no zero hour. So the way that I <clears throat> dealt with that was I just sort of added a adder chip in here. And it's just constantly adding a 1. So that makes this counter basically count from 1 to 16. And then I just need to decode, you know, whatever I need for the display off of that. The logic for that's fairly simple and easy to get to. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the only change that I made. <clears throat> um, I've used my, uh, my new and improved rat's nest uh, jumper technique here. Um, in previous things that I've made, I tried to, you know, keep everything flat against the breadboard, and I found that <clears throat> it was just as hard to, if not harder, to get to things and to change things. This thing, I did have to troubleshoot a little bit, and it was really easy to do. I was, you know, it looks like a big mess, but it's very easy to get in there and figure out where things are going, and if something's going to a wrong, you know, hole or whatever. And uh, I really don't think it used up much more wire than it would have... I did it any other way. So, um, there you go. One thing that um, I did was uh, the whole thing is sort of driven by a 555 timer down here. And I have a few pots down here. I was hoping to kind of like fine tune <coughs> the um, R1 values to, you know, the, the 555 basically puts out a one second period pulse. And uh, I was able to get the clock to be fairly accurate. <clears throat> Let's see if it's drifted here any while I've been making this video. Yeah, a little bit probably. So what I'm going to do going forward is um, next time I get down to the electronic shop, I'm going to see if I can find some crystal oscillators <clears throat> and build a uh, hopefully more rob robust um, you know, clocking circuit using um, you know, kind of some kind of like ripple carry, you know, device and um, probably a flip-flop to divide that in half. I'm trying to get just a one hertz pulse <clears throat> from a, some kind of a stable base, like a, a crystal oscillator. So I'll uh, implement that in the future and we'll see how that works out. Anyway, I just wanted to document this thing before I tear it all apart. And uh, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it.